Right, I'm going to start recording now um, as well on my end. But um, the question the question was, his front shoulder doesn't tuck a lot. Well, if you break it down and you bring him to about toe touch, and I actually can put a slope on his shoulders, you know, he's down about nine degrees. The reason that it doesn't look as drastic as other players is because his he doesn't cock his bat. So the one unique thing that Alonzo does compared to probably 95% of major league hitters is the angle between his, his uh, left forearm and the bat, if I draw that here, is, is more than 90 degrees. It's like 96 degrees, meaning his bat is very vertical in that position. Most players, a lot of times, are like 70 degrees. And that bat is over their head, right? Their bat, usually the middle of the barrel, is over the top of their head. So what he has is he, he kind of has almost a pre-cast position um, when he goes to launch his swing. So that's very different. Acuna has a little bit of this as well. Um, but it's very different than most players. Now, you what we'll see is when he goes to swing you can see that he actually resets it, okay? So if you, again, if we have him at toe touch position, I'll draw that line again with his bat, because it's kind of an interesting move, right? It looks like we're at, uh, you know, just under 100 degrees or so. We'll call it 100. But then when he drops his heel, he actually resets his hands. So yeah, I noticed that too. he kind of pulls it. It's, it's somewhat like, uh, you know, maybe even like Sergio Garcia, you know, kind of resets his wrist. And then if we look at it now, all of a sudden he's almost a couple degrees. It's not a lot, but it's, it's a couple degrees less. Well, most players go from like 70, you know, or 80 degrees at the start to about a hundred degrees in this position. He actually went the opposite way. He was open more and then he closed it more as he came through. Regardless, what that does is that creates tension in the top hand so that when he gets to his approach position and slides the knob out in front, there's tension in his, you know, in his right wrist when that knob is kind of facing, you know, out in front, out in front towards the pitcher or towards the ball or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, and then from here, from that approach position when the bat's parallel to the batter's box line, if I mark the end of his barrel and the knob of the bat, watch how yeah. much whip he gets. So by the time he gets to contact, okay, his barrel travels, I mean, I don't know how far this is, but you know, it kind of goes from here and then it bottoms out there and then it goes out to there. And the knob only moves uh, about five inches and the, and the bat probably moved like, uh, geez, five feet, four to five feet. That's where the release comes from. And that's where he creates a lot of leverage. I mean, he creates a lot of leverage with his legs too. We'll talk about that in a second. But when he gets his hands, he pulls his hands out in front. Notice how the barrel's still above his hands in this position, right? He's not on plane too deep in the zone. Like here's the ball. Let's see what this ball is doing. You know, for a power hitter, he doesn't have a big barrel dump. I guess that's the best way to way to put it. You know, he's he's not dropping his barrel a ton. So this ball, you know, that's coming at him came down at four degrees. It was a four degree downslope, and you can see his barrel probably gets on plane at about his front thigh, which actually is pretty early. I mean, we definitely don't want to be on plane back here. But he gets on playing at about his front thigh, and then you can see he hits it at about his front ankle, and then I can't tell where he comes off. But I said I would say he comes off about at his front foot. So he's on playing for a really long time. Now we talked about you know different people like should we hit balls out in front? Would you consider this him hitting it out in front? Well, let's go back to look at his base, because the number one thing I see with young players is they're too darn narrow, right? They don't want to get into their legs. Okay. I mean, this is what do we say? He's 6'2, right? He's 6'2. So if I draw this triangle, if I bring him to about ball of the front foot, his ball of the front foot hits the ground, and then I draw a line between his arches, and then I go up to his inseam and back down, you can see like how much wider that is. 
Okay, look how much wider the base is. I bet it's four to five inches wider than his inseam. Okay, that's a big man getting low and into the ground. And then when he starts to rotate, watch that back knee and shin. And then let's watch his head. Let's see how much his head moves. I mean, his head doesn't move at all. It stays right in that circle. Look how far his back knee has come down and in. Look how far his back shin has come down. Look how his head is stabilized back over his back leg. Look at his front leg straightened out. I mean, these are really, anyone can do this. And I use this video a lot when I'm reviewing players uh, because it's so good. It could be a guy that's 5'10". It could be a guy that's 4'10". They can do all of these same moves and and be a successful hitter. Now, even though this ball was 108 miles an hour at 33 degrees, okay, we you know a young kid can still hit a ball you know with this velocity, and I probably wouldn't want him to hit much higher than 33 degrees at a young age. But that ball's still going to go for extra base hits. So it's just a it's just a fun swing to look at. If we look at his back foot, it's really great because he gets he gets super wide with his base but his back foot only goes forward like two inches if we look at his back toe maybe one inch a lot of players get wide and then they try to drag their back foot so far something else we can learn that i see with a lot of young players is this foot comes up and off the ground like too high notice how his back foot stays along the ground that that foot doesn't kick up a lot of times you see bryce harper's foot his heel kicks up three or four inches on some pitches I see that with a lot of kids. Typically when that move happens with the back heel kicking up, the head will move forward. And then if the head moves forward, then what happens is our spine tilts forward and we'll start to, our, we end up swinging down too much sometimes because our upper body is kind of hunched over. Plus we can't rotate very fast when our upper body does that. So just really good moves all the way around with his swing. Um, his extension, he's short to it. Okay, if I get him, one of the other things I like to take note note of is, you know, in that approach position when the bat's parallel to the batter's box line, if I draw a vertical line from his bat, how far back is it? it you know, does it get really far back behind his back foot? No. So that's a very short swing. That's a very short approach. And then it's like, what does his extension look like with his arms? Like so many people are like, oh, extension's stupid. Don't extend. Extend is the worst the worst term you can have in baseball, you don't want to extend. Um, you have to extend. This is beautiful extension. You're not extending at point of contact, but if you don't extend through contact, what's happening is you've decelerated your arms and you're cutting off your swing. And when you cut off your swing, your swing moves, in his instance, his swing would move left. What happens when it moves left? You hit the ball off the end of the bat. What happens when you hit it off the end of the bat? You hit a ground ball to the pull side. So extension is very very important um and i i don't know why it has such a bad connotation i don't know why people say you don't want to extend uh, i just i don't get it i mean i would i would say well, you don't want to be fully extended at contact but i've never seen anybody do that that wasn't eight years old um so right. <laughs> staying through the pitch when the reason you want to extend is i know it's kind of hard to see on this video but you know he's making contact right here what happens if he was two inches early? Well, if he's two inches early, he still smokes it because he extended his right arm through, which extended the barrel through. If he yeah. didn't extend all the way through and he didn't get to this position in his power V with his right arm all the way extended, his barrel would have moved up right at the last second. And instead of hitting a bullet to left, he would have hit a ground ball to third or short. So um, anyway, he encompasses everything, a short approach, uh, long extension through the ball. His lower half is great. You can see here, I mean, he still really doesn't have much weight on his back foot yet, even though it looks like it does. The weight doesn't hit his back foot until here, until right after he extends all the way through. But he has the perfect mix of a weight shift going forward. I mean, that's a pretty big move for a big man. When his front foot lands, look at his front hip open. When his front foot lands, look at his belt start to turn. When his front foot lands, look at his back knee start to come in. When his front foot lands, look at his upper body and hands staying back. So this is a big, strong man that creates leverage, and he also creates torque and separation. Okay, so how much? You know, I'll guesstimate this. You know, based on what we see here two dimensionally, but um, 
We're looking at, you know, over 30, mid 30s for his torque, 240 pounds with a weight shift and a lot of ground force. This is a guy that's going to hit the ball really hard and really far.